Hello and welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Here we have Dan on what will actually be Curses versus Jordan on Cephalid Breakfast versus a Dark Ritual based combo deck, kind of. I mean, it's a prison, I suppose, but it does also kill you with the prison as the game plan is to get Curse of Misfortunes out and a whole pile of curses on your opponent's head. Leyline of the Void, a major problem here for Jordan, as he's going to need to either find a Thassa's Oracle or use the pivot of Stoneforge Mystic for Aldra Complete or Batter Skull to win this game. Just milling yourself out, not going to do anything. Can't dread return that Thassa's Oracle or get it from hand. Aether Vial, a welcome card in most opening sevens. As it frees up your mana for cantrips or makes your stuff uncounterable. Eventually starts tapping for two mana, essentially getting your cephalids and Thassa's oracles into play uncounterably for no mana. It's incredibly strong, this deck. So you do have enough card selection that I believe it is totally justifiable to run three copies of it. Got Ponder and Brainstorm. Don't generally need extra copies of it. Aether Vial puts in that Nomad. Cantrips are just digging. There's a Force of Will. And that might have been a Thassa's Oracle. If that's the case, just going to need a Cephalid Illusionist. And this Ley Line won't be as major of a problem. And... I'm not sure what that card was, but it merited a force of will. Cephalid coming in. That was a Thassa's Oracle. Expect the Oracle to be cast and then respond to the trigger. Oh, well, or you can do it that way. Oh, and he casts it. All right. I mean, not... not doesn't necessarily matter versus curses there. Um, so we've got the Aether Violet too. Generally, you're going to use that to put in the Thassa's Oracle, but a tapped out opponent not playing Force of Will for days. Fair enough. Thassa's Oracle getting the job done. So Cephalid Illusionist, if you're unfamiliar, uh, if you've watched the channel, you've probably seen this deck. Uh, but Cephalid, when targeted, mills three cards from your library into your graveyard, eventually hitting Narcomoebas and Dread Returns to bring back that Thassa's Oracle and win. There, you're able to dig and find the Thassa's Oracle, something that happens much more often post-sideboard, as you have potentially four copies of Thassa's Oracle. At the time of this recording, might have been on two Thassa's Oracles. Uh, I was playing this deck quite a bit at this point. Playing a bit of Storm right now. Still have this built. Still really like it. I think it's a dangerous and difficult deck to play against. It's a deck that can just kill you on the second turn. Just turn one Nomad, turn two Cephalid, and potentially all uncounterably in between your Aether Vials and your Avern of Souls. Of course, it does have Counter Magic as well. It's a spicy deck. Of course, Curses... Certainly spicy as well. It doesn't have those cantrips, which I tend to lean towards. Got a chrome mox and printing that second ley line. Three mana available. The crystal vein, I believe, is the name of that one. Don't see that one very often. City of Traders and Ancient Tomb, the more commonly played. This one you have to sacrifice in order to get that speed boost of the extra mana. A deck like Curse is potentially going to be happy with the return on that investment as a single Curse of Misfortunes will eventually win the game. It's just a matter of speed. Aether Vial coming down for Jordan. Ancient Tomb, now up to 5 mana available. And we got a Trinisphere. This card could be a major problem. If Jordan doesn't have everything he needs in hand, looks like we've got a splash of red. Will force it. 
Trinisphere really slows the game down. Take a look at your opponent's mana. Count it up. Divide by three. That's the number of spells they're going to be playing. They're going to be playing typically at most one or two spells per turn. They'd need nine mana to play three spells per turn. Generally just doesn't happen. Really impactful spells in order to make that work. And it looks like Jordan's got a hand that he wants to force the combo with. Now, another way you could play this with the Aether Vial out and access to the mana uh, would have been to save that Force of Will for something else. Of course, you have to have three mana to make that worthwhile. Person Misfortunes has stuck. Yeah, it looks like he wouldn't have even had the third mana. That is something to consider if your deck can function underneath Trinisphere and you're a combo deck. Have that force of will to potentially stop something that would be more of a problem. Like, for example, Curse of Misfortunes. That's often the line. This curse is absolutely going to run wild here. Of course, force of will, no introduction needed there. Curse of Misfortunes going to get a new curse every upkeep. Stoneforge Mystic. Now a 1-1 one, one, thanks to Overwhelming Splendor. Wizard Cycling. Step through. Two mana to get a wizard out of the deck. That can get fast as Oracle. Or Cephalid Elusive. Thoughtseize is going to take the Shuko, leaving a Fass's Oracle and another Cephalid. Still just two mana. It would prevent all spells from being cast for Jordan. Arc Amoeba adds into the mix. Of course, these are just one ones right now. Those familiar with curses know what's coming next. Curse of Death's Hold. All creatures getting minus one, minus one. So we've got the setting their power and toughness to one, one, and then giving them all minus one, minus one. That's a lock. Any creature-based strategy, not going to work with those two cards on board. They're all going to just be zero, zero as a state-based effect. And uh, that'll do it there as Jordan scoops it up. Try and win the next one. of Death's Hold on its own is actually very good versus this deck, stopping the Cephalid and the Nomad and the Narcomoebas. Basically are left with the 0-1 Stone Forges, which can potentially still win, along with a solid piece of equipment like Batter Skull or Cauldre Complete. It doesn't completely beat the deck on its own, but it does shut down the main line. Jordan playing this at the time with Hollowed Fountain. Since picked up the Tundras, but had a bunch of success with the a slightly suboptimal build. I mean, it's a real trade-off in terms of money versus effect, but you can certainly win games of Legacy running Dock lands over the dual lands, and as you pick up dual lands, it really starts to make a difference. Got some discard here, leaving just a step through and a cavern of souls. This is not looking good for Jordan. Two cards in hand. Dark Ritual into Curse of Misfortunes. We have a Wizard Cycle in response, grabbing the Cephalid. The 
Cephalid, Nomad. That will do it. Just like that, Jordan picks one up.